If you notice the title of my message this morning, What Should Christians Wear to Worship? I thought what we ought to start off doing is I'm going to check and have everybody stand so I can see what you're wearing. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But you can remember the old days. I know when I was growing up, my grandmother bring me to church, that that was important to everybody. Everybody dressed all up so fancy to go to church. Interesting. <laughs> but anyhow, this... This sermon is not about the proper attire for church attendance. God doesn't care as much as man does about dress as long as it is modest and decent. This sermon is about what Christ-centered life should look like. And not just at church, but at all times of your life. I realize, and you probably do too, that people do judge you by what you wear. I listen and watch people in shopping malls or walking around and say, look what that person's wearing today. So it does happen, people do that. A young man came to worship service one Sunday. Maybe you saw him. He was wearing lots of leather and chains around his neck. His hair was spiked blue. He wore black eyeliner and had a ring in his lip, through his nose, on his ears. I could tell what lots of people were thinking when he strolled down the aisle and sat right up front. They were thinking this kid must be a rebellious teenager who is probably uh, hooked maybe on alcohol or drugs. And he probably even has a criminal record and uses filthy language. But little did we know, he was in a costume. The great speaker that day had him come and dressed that way to go along with the sermon of showing favoritism. It may be sad, you know, and it may be wrong, but God judges you on the way you dress spiritually. Think of that. Spiritually. He will judge us based on the kind of spiritual clothes we are wearing. Are we wearing sexual immorality? Impurity, rage, anger, filthy language? Or are we wearing love, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience? In our text that was read in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, gives us some real sound advice on spiritual dress. So first part. Worship is a lifestyle, not on one hour event. Verses 1 through 4 of our text. Paul says that if you are a Christian, you have been raised with Christ. See, if you are a Christian, a born again Christian, then a lifestyle worship is the standard. That's your standard. Verse 1 part, if you look at the text. It requires your heart. Your heart should be near the throne of God where Jesus is seated. Verse 2 tells us it requires your mind. We are to set our minds on things that are above. And thirdly, it requires our lives. Christ is to be our life. Not just Sunday or one other day or hour. He's required to be our lives. Christ is to be our life. He is to be everything, everything to us. How do you know if Christ is your life? Hey, how do you know that? Well, think about this. 
Where do you spend your money? Where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your passion? Jesus said, love the Lord with everything. Verses 5 through 11, which was read, what not to wear to worship is in that text. Paul says, here are some things you are not to wear as a Christian. You are to put them to death when you are baptized into Christ. What are they? How about sexual immorality? How about adultery? Sexual lusts? Perversion? Impurity? Impure thoughts? Actions that are sinful? Lust? And out of control appetite for worldly things? Boy, are we in America have an appetite for worldly things today that I've never seen before. How about evil desires? Things you know are wrong, but you want them anyhow. How about greed? Greed is adultery because you worship it and not God. These things bring about the wrath of God. They will send you to hell, to be honest with you. If you live in them and continue to wear them as clothes, I won't see you in heaven. See, these are the clothes you wore before you became a Christian. But when you become a Christian, you must get rid of them and put them away and then put on new clothes. Paul continues with more cl- clothes you must get rid of. Actually, in a, as you read that note, you do study the scripture throughout the week. He continues to give you more clothes you must get rid of. He gives a list of things that I think are progressively taking you further away from God and other things. Let me just illustrate. One is anger. Like uh, someone in this church gets me mad. Anger. How about rage? You are so mad you can't stand being around them. You feel so sick when they are around you. You know you should go make it right with them, but you are just too mad. I see a lot of that in church people. I really do. How about malice? Now, not only are you mad at them, but you really want to see something bad happen to them. You really do. And there's slander. Since nothing bad is happening to them, you will help the process out a little by talking badly about them to others. We call it gossip sometimes. Did you hear about what happened to so-and-so and what they're doing? And then, of course, you have that filthy language living. You have that out-of-control tongue. And it leads to other things besides slander. Nasty words then and deceptions happen. Paul says that these things need to die when you are immersed into Christ. That's what he's pointing out to you. Your life is not to be marked by them. Take those clothes off and put on new ones. Your Herod often said, that, how do you know if you're a Christian, you know, by their fruit? Well, folks, get some of that rotten food off you. Well, what about verses 12 through 14 it says, what to wear to worship? When you become a Christian, a born-again Christian, everything changes. Everything changes. 
The old man dies in baptism. And a new creature is then born in your life. You take off the old clothes and put on the new ones. These changing of clothes is a lifelong process. It just doesn't happen instantly or overnight. Paul tells us we are holy. We are set apart for God's use. Paul tells us we are dearly loved. God's love can transform us if we will let him do that. He sure will. We are to clothe ourselves with compassion. That requires action. See, compassion without action is just piety. How about kindness? The world can be mean. People today, more than ever, I think, need kindness. Humility. We realize who we are compared to Christ. Then you have gentleness. We have a soft heart of Jesus for others. Do you? Do you think about that? When things happen that you have, your heart will be asking to make it soft, like Jesus' heart is for us? Patience. We don't expect perfection out of others. Be patient. Bear with one another. Extend the grace of God to others. How about forgive each other? We cannot expect God to forgive us if we don't forgive others. It's that simple. I'll never forget that person, what they did to me, or to a relative, or to a friend. You didn't forgive anything. How about love? See, love should cover all of these clothes. Love should. See, the name of the label of our clothes does matter. If you look at verses 15 through 17. I can remember way back when I grew up in the 50s. I mean, I had a perfect outfit. Perfect. I wore the best sneakers you could buy with a red stripe. Levi jean pants on. And of course, wearing my butler high school blue and gold sport jacket. And I had perfect clothes. See, labels mean a lot in clothes, don't they? I know it does. I watch the ladies shopping. What label is this one? Where'd you buy that one label? So label means a lot to, in clothes. See, labels also mean a lot in spiritual clothes. If Jesus Christ is not on the label of your spiritual clothes, you are wearing the wrong clothes, let me tell you. You truly are. See, when Jesus is on your label, you have peace and thanksgiving. See, Paul finishes this section by giving us the keys to changing clothes. Versus Bible study. See, let the word of God what, dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom. The words one another tells us that we must study the Bible. Surprise, surprise, with other Christians. Not just alone. I don't go to Sunday school or a Bible study. I do it home alone. Second is corporate worship. You know, as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to each other with gratitude in your hearts, it is not the style of song or worship that matters. What matters is the attitude of your heart when you're singing. 
There's nothing like singing corporately together. There's nothing like that. Join us with the next one we have coming on a Sunday night. You'll be amazed what it will do to your heart. Another one is service. Whatever you do, whether word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me say that again. Whatever you do, whether word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say that to yourself. Something comes up, say, is this for the name of Jesus? I'm not boasting, but I'll go way back when. I was riding down a highway, and I looked, and there was two elderly ladies outside of their car with a flat tire. So I pulled over, I'm going to help her. And helped them both. And I worked and changed the tire and everything, and they reached in their wallet to give me money. They want to pay me. I said, I don't want any money. Why wouldn't you want any money? He said, and this is what I said as a new Christian. I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. Think of that. Whatever we do, jobs, hobbies, recreation, we can do it as a service to our Lord. It's critical. It's important. Then how about prayer? Do it in the name of Christ to God. See, prayer is so vital. So vital. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do it without prayer. I prayed all through the night. Because a dear loved one, as some of you know, a friend of my wife and I for years, reminiscing about her f- friendship. Her birthday was just a few days ago. She was 99 years. Is that right, huh? 99 years old. <laughs> See, I'm old. And we had a birthday party for her at Mercy Rehab at that time, the Commons. And I was surprised she could even get up in the chair and do anything. But she ate a lot of ice cream. But anyway. But the prayer time is what's critical when you visit and see someone. As I hold her hand for all those years, she'd squeeze it. I'd ask many people as I pray, do you love Jesus as Lord and Savior? If you do, squeeze my hand. They squeeze it. And what joy comes in your heart, right? If they don't squeeze them, then I share a little more. Prayer in the name of Christ to God is so vital for your life. Pray for me. Today as we have the funeral service. Imagine being 99 years old, five days later she dies. But she knew Jesus as her Lord and Savior. She knew Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Can't ask for any better blessing of knowing that we'll be together someday in heaven, my wife and I and her. All because, I'll tell you real quickly, her sister died. And she wasn't a Christian, not the sister, but our friend, Betty. And she had heard the the message of salvation. And was asked if you would die tomorrow, would you go to heaven? And it bothered her so much. And she listened to the whole plan of salvation. And at that death of her sister, she received Christ as her Savior many years ago. An amazing thing, she started getting involved with Bible studies. But another thing she'd do, she'd read a Bible every day and she bought a booklet, empty page one, and she'd read the Bible, then she'd close the Bible, and then she'd write what God is talking to her about. For years and years she's done that. And she'd pray. Prayer is vital. See, 
Jesus shared the parable of, of the wedding banquet. You remember that one? A king prepared a banquet for his son. If you remember that story. And when it was time, he sent his servants to get all those, invite them all. But those who were invited refused to come and mistreated the servants. So the king sent more servants out to invite anyone who wanted to come. Anybody can come. And the banquet hall was full. When the king arrived, he found a man not dressed right for the banquet. He had his servants toss him out into darkness where there will be weeping and garnishing of teeth. See, God has invited us to a great banquet in the heavenly someday. You know that? I don't know about you, but that's kind of exciting to me. We are free to attend, but we must be dressed right. But you must be dressed right. We must be wearing our spiritual wedding clothes. Are you? Are you wearing compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience? Are you dressed, bearing with other Christians and forgiving them as the Lord has forgiven you? And of all these virtues, have you put on love? The love of Jesus Christ. The greatest love. Think about that. There's no way to heaven without the love of Christ. Without his shed blood and dying on a cross for you. So I ask you. Have you put on the right clothes of worship? Not only that, are you sharing your love of Jesus Christ with others so they might have invitation to the wedding, celebration in heaven someday? That's always been a concern of mine of people that I meet. As far as a Christian, I can't ask well, anything about that. I just say, what sport do you play? How good are you? What business are you in? Climb the ladder of success. That's what the world's about. Until Jesus got a hold of me. and Changed my life. I threw those clothes away. Put on the right clothes of salvation. And my desire is to love all people. In the name of Jesus. Think about this text of scripture. On how you might be treating people. Is that the way Jesus will treat them? Or are you still wearing your old clothes? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your love and your goodness and mercy and grace and I'm so thankful that I heard your call and asked forgiveness of all my sins. You know, Lord, what I said, that I'm a worse sinner than Paul was, but would forgive you all my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior, and that I would live for you. That's my desire for all people, Lord. So I just pray separately for this wonderful memorial service of this wonderful woman who loves you, who is in heaven now, that all her friends and relatives who do not know you, Jesus, today's the day of salvation for them. Then they will have a real celebration. I know she's up there waiting. with all the people who will come with the right clothes on. So I thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.